Here at the Kilowatts, we review electric vehicles of all shapes and sizes. We've driven everything from the high-performance Model S Plaid to the much more modestly equipped Mini Cooper Electric. And next week, we'll be driving the upcoming Lucid Air at their factory in Arizona. Up until now, we've completely overlooked an entire category of electric vehicle the hydrogen electric vehicle, or fuel cell vehicle. For those of you that already know about the history and politics of hydrogen, you probably know why we've made this decision. However, if you don't, at the Kilowatts, we feel that hydrogen, at least for consumers, is an unnecessary middle step. It's a distraction slowing us down in the transition to a fully electric future. Donut Media has a great video on the history of hydrogen and the entire industry entitled, Why Hydrogen Flopped. You can check it out here. In Donut's video, they cover everything from how hydrogen works to why it's more costly for the environment and the consumer. But even with this wealth of information readily available on the internet about why hydrogen is just a bad option, people still seem to keep buying them. So in this video, we're gonna try to understand why by spending 48 hours with a modern hydrogen electric vehicle. The car we rented for this test is a 2021 Toyota Mirai XLE, meaning that it is the latest and greatest, better looking second generation model. From the outside, this used model is completely redesigned. It no longer resembles a Prius as much as it does a luxurious Lexus, with body lines resembling the LS or even the sportier Lexus IS. And on top of that, the 19 inch aluminum alloy wheels that come standard don't look half bad. Inside, it's a good looking five seater, with comfortable leather seats and a large touchscreen infotainment. The $50,000 XLE comes with Qi charging, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and a great backup camera standard. For an extra $16,000, you can get the limited model with a panoramic glass roof and three zone air conditioning, but you'll keep the same 182 horsepower and 9.2 second 0 60 time. Both models come with Toyota Safety Sense 2.5, which includes a functional lane centering and dynamic cruise control. At first glance, it's not really that bad of a car, but as you begin to compare it to other electrics on the market, you begin to see why the choice to go fully battery electric becomes much clearer to us. So let's break it down. While it honestly feels kind of quick when you're accelerating on a highway on-ramp from 35 to 65, with that 9.2 second 0 to 60, it might be the slowest electric vehicle you can buy in the US. For comparison, the economically designed Nissan Leaf will do zero to 60 in 7.4 seconds and starts at just 27.5. Additionally, space in the Mirai is surprisingly limited. There are three fuel tanks, two down low in the rear and one that bisects the vehicle running from the front to the back like an old fashioned transmission hump. As I mentioned, there is no front trunk because all that space under the hood is used up by the fuel cell and the 1.24 kilowatt hour battery that contains the buffer of electrons is placed squarely between the rear seats and the trunk. Meaning you've got just 9.6 cubic feet of trunk space in the entire vehicle. The only EV with less cargo space we could find was the much smaller mini electric. But at least with the mini, you can fold that second row of seats down to fit some larger items. Also for comparison, the Hyundai Iconic the Nissan Leaf and Tesla's Model 3 all have more than twice the cargo space of the Mirai with 23 cubic feet. The only good reason we found to purchase a Toyota Mirai might be the advertised 400 mile range. But in practice, we even found that to be questionable. Sure, the actual time it takes to fill a Mirai might be comparable to a gas vehicle, only taking about five minutes but that's definitely not the full story. You've probably already heard that refueling stations are limited. There's only about 50 of them in California, and if you exclude the one in Hawaii, there's only 50 of them in the entire United States. During our time with the Mirai, we found out that each one of these fueling stations only has one high pressure port, and these modern fueling stations can only fill the Mirai to 70 megapascals, which to be fair, 70 megapascals is equivalent to roughly 10,000 PSI, which is, absolutely insane. In our experience, many of the stations had ran out of hydrogen, leaving the remaining stations with long lines. The most range we ever saw during our trip was 253 miles. On top of that, the cost of fuel was no less than the cost of gas per mile. We could talk about the shortcomings of the Mirai all day long. For example, the infotainment is clunky and the premium audio lacks any real depth. These things even have a bad warranty, covering the powertrain for just three years or 60,000 miles. 
So after looking at all aspects of this vehicle, why are people buying them? Well, it's gotta be the money. So the Mirai technically is an electric vehicle, meaning it qualifies for the $7,500 federal tax credit and several of the state tax credits as well. So you can take off roughly $10,000 for those. And if you use Toyota Financial Services to make your purchase, they'll throw in $20,000, yes, $20,000 of bonus cash. On top of that, with any Mirai you purchase, you get a prepaid $15,000 fuel card that you can use over the course of several years. After all that, a $50,000 car begins to look a lot more like a $5,000 car. And without these incentives, hydrogen falls apart for the consumer, for the environment, for everyone. So why then would big companies like Toyota be incentivizing hydrogen vehicles to the tune of $20,000? Well, to prepare for this video, we met up with my buddy Ricky from the YouTube channel 2Bit Da Vinci, and he explained it better than I ever could. So Ricky, you take it from here. All the gas companies have made a fortune because we need them. You and I, unless we have oil fields in our backyards, I don't, we're not producing our own oil. We're buying it from somebody else. The, the minute you buy a car, I always say this, you're signing a lifelong contract with the oil companies saying, yeah. I am a customer of yours for life yeah. because at every week or every day or whatever the interval is, I'll need to buy from you. Mm -hmm. It's a good business if you can get into it, right? Sure. They lose that when you get battery electric because I can get solar panels on my house and charge at home. I don't need anybody. Or I could buy from my utility and they become my, I become their customer. But with hydrogen, they get that control back because you and I, I guess technically we could produce hydrogen in our backyards. We could put electrodes in a big vat of water and separate it out and store hydrogen in high, comp don't do that. It's not worth it and dangerous. So we would be beholden to a company again. And I think that's where Shell and ExxonMobil love hydrogen because they want to maintain a product that they have the exclusive ability to offer you and that you become beholden to them. And that's what I love about electric vehicles is we're finally free of that. We don't need companies that are multinational companies doing stuff all around the world mm -hmm. for our energy. Um, but those companies aren't gonna go down without a fight. And so this I think is their last bastion of how to be green and environmentally friendly is hydrogen. Now you may be thinking, so what? So what if Toyota, BMW, and others wanna work with big oil companies to ensure that there's this third fuel option, hydrogen, that you know maybe isn't as great for the consumers? How does that matter to me? Well, it's slowing down the transition to a fully electric future. It's convincing politicians and consumers that you know maybe electric isn't quite there yet, when in reality, it is. And that's what we do every day. We review electric vehicles every day. And if you enjoy that, Please go ahead and give this video a like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.